As next generation sequencing becomes more accessible, library prep remains a bottleneck, requiring labs to automate to scale up. I spoke to SPT LabTech's Chief Technology Officer, Joby Jenkins, about what more there is to be done to democratize automation and how he sees SPT contributing. We've heard a lot, I think, in various realms in technology about this idea of democratization of different technologies. NGS is being democratized, AI certainly. And uh, I've also heard about it, you know, that, that word being used in automation. Has automation been democratized? And if not, what, what is there still to be done? Yeah, I don't think automation has been fully democratized. I think it, it's in it's in the process of being democratized. I would say, and I, I think there's there's certainly a generational shift, and it's it's accelerating. I think now you walk into a lab, it's very rare that you don't see any sort of automated instrumentation, or in some cases, it's it's fully automated. I think what's left in terms of you know the, the full democratization is, is really around usability i think the tools are there in terms of the functionality and the, the the ability to do experiments using automation instead of using your hands is is absolutely there but i think when people where people are shying away from that is when there's a barrier to use there's a uh, it's going to take me longer to program that robot to do that experiment that i've got in my head and I think that's the piece that needs really breaking down. But we've started a business, we started with smaller benchtop instruments um, where usability was absolutely key. And often they were going into labs where there was no existing automation. So we've had that that background in in the sort of democratization from, for, for quite a long time. And what we've tried to do in more recent years with products like Firefly is actually take that mindset where you're you're not developing a system for a, an automation engineer or a programmer to then build into a, a system or an ecosystem. You're actually developing a tool for a scientist to be able to go and do that experiment that they thought and they want to translate it and quickly get the results and get the data. Because ultimately, you know, a scientist doesn't care too much about how, the automation or how they get, they just want their data, they want their result and they want to, you know, progress their research and progress their experimentation. So that's really what Firefly was developed to address was this this system that could do these highly complex NGS library, you know, very complex process, lots of, you know, advanced liquid handling steps required. There's, you know, magnetic beads to manipulate. There's incubations. There's, there's very uh, deep levels of, of automation required. And what kind of challenges do you run into when you have, you know, this, this audience of people who might need something, you know, more, a little more user friendly, a little more approachable. Basically, the, the challenge you have is the spectrum of, of, the, of the user base. You have at one level, you have really advanced, um, experienced users who, who want to spend a lot of time tuning in the, the, the precise settings, the liquid handling settings, really dial in the automation. At, at the other end of the spectrum, you want somebody who literally just wants to walk up, pick the method and hit go and walk off. And I think that's the challenge. And I think keeping that user centric um ui where you can actually you know satisfy both of those ends of the spectrum and, and everything in between it is really you know has been one of the big challenges and we've, we've done that with the with the software we've got user access level control so people can log in and they can they'll log in at different levels if they're an automation engineer at one end of the spectrum versus if they're a you know a user in a in a clinical lab where they just want to you know everything's locked down they just literally select the method and run um, then we've got loading guides, so we walk people through where they're to place labware and very, you know, intuitively make it very clear and very simple for people to follow step by step guides. And then really importantly, the, the cloud sharing of protocols. That's one of the key differentiators with Firefly. We have this connected community cloud where we can put validated methods in the cloud and they can get pushed to all the instruments in the field. All the instruments in the field are effectively identical, so any method can be pulled on an equivalent spec instrument, wherever that may be. And that's really powerful when you think of, you know, collaborators in different labs, um, replicating methods, you know, if there's throughputs going up and people want to increase their capacity, they can add a machine. They haven't then got to dial in that machine and dial in that method, they can just grab it from the cloud and off it goes. And the, the commu community element of it is also was all key to our philosophy with Firefly and 
to the point of democratizing, we felt that there should be a forum for users to be able to develop methods themselves, validate themselves, effectively peer review them, put them into the cloud with some information about what they developed and how, how they felt it had, had, you know, had been run, what the data looked like. And then for other people to try that method, pull that method down, comment, yeah, like, et cetera, and, and really build that more, more like a social network. Now we haven't quite got to that level yet, but we've got this community cloud where we're starting to, to bring that, that element in. And so customers themselves can have their own cloud. If you're a pharmaceutical company, say with multiple sites, you can share protocols within your own cloud completely securely. But the other angle is the service. You know, if we can, we have a lot of sensing, a lot of, you know, very rich log files. It, in order to be able to diagnose a problem and rectify it, in some cases before the user is even aware, if you have that level of connectivity, we have that with some of our other products where we have a, a cloud-based maintenance server effectively that's constantly monitoring, um, in this case, refrigeration, duty cycles, things like that. It's really valuable to the customer. What kinds of challenges do your users experience with reproducibility um, that the Firefly or, or any of your other instruments can help to address? Yeah, I think it's twofold. I think automation in general helps with reproducibility. It is more reproducible because it's a it's a robot effectively, and that's what robots do. They do the same thing over and over again. Going beyond that, Firefly specifically, and what we do specifically, some of our technologies, our liquid handling technologies are positive displacement, which is you know widely considered the, the gold standard of liquid handling or pipetting technology. You haven't got any air cushion or anything compressible in that system when you're moving liquids. So for handling viscous liquids, for handling particulates, things like bead solutions or you know viscous master mixes, again, the NGS the spectrum of reagents in NGS library prep is really, really quite broad and really quite challenging. You have, you know, the whole gamut of, of types of liquid. So handling as much of that as, as you can with positive displacement gives you a huge advantage. And it also minimizes the optimization time. The other thing that we pride ourselves on our, our applications team, both field based and internal really work hard to get the methods perfect because we're ultimately going to push them into the cloud. You know, sometimes customers are developing methods and then we'll, we'll tune them in a little bit. Sometimes it's via partnerships, so reagent kit manufacturers, and we'll work really closely with them to really heavily optimize the liquid handling and all the incubation steps, all of, all of the involved steps in the process to make sure that that protocol is perfect before it's then pushed out to the, to the wider community. So when you add those things together, you, you see a, you see a huge, you know, huge impact in reproducibility and ultimately higher quality data. And that's really what, what this is all about. One question that continues to come up is, you know, how different companies are taking advantage of adv uh, advances in AI. Is, is that something that you, you think about? Is that something you've, you've kind of already implemented? Yeah, it's definitely something we think about. Um, implemented directly, I'd say not, not yet. Um, but I think I tend to think of it more as the, the wider ecosystem of scientific research and how AI is, is driving that in, in lots of different facets. And, you know, drug discovery, it's, it's making huge inroads. And, and then thinking about how automation plugs into that and what we need to do with, with the automation, with the instrumentation it, to enable that sort of ecosystem of AI driven research to, to thrive. So. That's really where we're coming at it. And I think making sure that the instruments are, you know, have APIs such that they can be integrated into big systems, making sure that they can, you know, data can be shared across instruments very easily, making sure that log files are very rich, making sure that, you know, data transfer from, you know, if you've got barcodes coming in on certain vessels that that's tracked all the way through. There's, there's obviously sort of on instrument AI, tools that that we're definitely thinking about things like predictive maintenance going a bit beyond that more a bit more into the future i think um, method optimization and method development it'd be nice to get to a point where we've got such a big data set of for this particular liquid type for this particular viscosity these settings work really well if you want to mix it into that having having an algorithm that can predict that and effectively maybe not write the method for you, but give you a, a good steer on where to go with a method would be, I think, a great use of that.